ऑक्सीजन थेरेपी नो ऑक्सीजन थेरेपी उसमें से काफी देर आर मेनी थिंग्स दैट कम इन ऑक्सीजन थेरेपी यू हैव नेजल प्रॉम्प्स यू हैव हार्डसन्स मास्क यू हैव टीपीसीस यू हैव नॉन इनवेसिव वेंटिलेशन यू हैव इनवेसिव वेंटिलेशन एंड यू हैव हाई फ्लो नेजल कैनिकल्स ओके नाउ व्हेन वी टॉक अबाउट सिस्टम्स देयर इज अ क्लियर डिस्टिंक्शन बिटवीन टू सिस्टम्स वन सिस्टम इज कॉल्ड एज लो फ्लो सिस्टम्स and the other is called as high flow systems abhi when i say low flow system usme aata hai ye nasal prongs theek hai abhi ye jo nasal prongs they are very distinct device what do you know by nasal prongs can, can you tell me how do they work how does a nasal prong work so i'll i'll tell you the question more simply when we are actually giving oxygen the oxygen is coming from the flow meter that is 100% oxygen that is coming from the oxygen tank that is down there so that is full oxygen if you are giving through a cylinder that is full oxygen that is full oxygen right however when the patient gets the oxygen it is either 21% or 24% or 25 to so 100% kyun nahi hai my question again i'll explain to you so what is coming from this from the flow meter is 100% because of 100 there is nothing in that only oxygen 100% means 100% oxygen उसमें मैंने अगर एयर मिक्स कर दिया तो अलग हो जाएगा उसमें अगर कार्बन डाइक्साइड मिक्स कर दिया from nose to lungs sir when it's going that uh, so there is a wastage of oxygen like you are giving 2 uh, liters 2 liters is going you are giving 3 liters 3 liters is going you are giving 4 liters 4 liters is going so how does this change the percentage of oxygen what is your thinking sir so, anyone sir so, oil uh, inspiration we are getting air from also uh, air from the atmosphere also is not close right so so he says what is this effect called as in anesthesia you should know this effect this effect is called as venturi's venturi effect. effect now what is venturi effect abhi samjho every machine in the hospital that works with flow works on a principle called as venturi's principle so whenever you are uh, giving an exam and you have nasal prongs you have suction you have uh, any kind of device uh, <coughs> nrbm you have hartson's mask you have to men- mention the word venturi principle now what is this principle this principle says that if i have if i have a um, <coughs> if i have a, a, a flow that is going in and suddenly the flow becomes low because becomes the area becomes open i mean upar se if i give 10 liters to pipe to chota hai na pipe to chota hai pipe to iske andar pressure jata rahega na 10 liter agar iske andar dalne ki koshish karunga if i put 10 liters in this pipe If I put 10 liters in this pipe, the pressure on this will be very high. Now, if I put 10 liters, if I and if it is open from here, suddenly the pressure will reduce. Suddenly the pressure will reduce. Understand me? Clear? Yes, sir. 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 Clear? Yes, ये हमको पता है आ, अगर यहां पर लो प्रेशर जनरेट हुआ है ओके तो गैस बाहर से इधर आ जाएगा और साथ में जाएगा नीचे समझ आ रहा है क्या बोल रहा हूं वंस मोर समझाता हूं यू पुट 10 लीटर्स ऑफ ऑक्सीजन इन दिस 10 लीटर्स ओके इट इज अ वेरी हाई 10 लीटर मतलब आप सोच सकते हो कितना कैन हो गया पानी का 1 लीटर कितना हो गया इतना बड़ा कैन हो गया 10 लीटर डाल रहे हैं इसके अंदर अगर हम 10 लीटर पर मिनट डाल रहे हैं इसके अंदर ओके और यहां पर लो प्रेशर आ रहा है इफ देयर इज लो प्रेशर Air will move from outside area to this area. Such an understanding. Air will move from everywhere into this area. You are understanding this. This means that I have put either hundred percent or not. But if the air came out from outside, then it was diluted. So the concentration of oxygen is diluted. So diluted means that the FiO2 changes. Are you understanding? Yes. Sir. Yes. Sir. clear sachin have you understood have you understood ha huh? this is the principle that many devices work on 
like our nasal cannula. Now what happens in the nasal cannula? We have put two prongs here. Two prongs here. Mm -hmm. Jo wo prong hum laga de, so what is happening is your flow is very high, two liters. Two liters per minute. But the bada amount. Hai. Two liters means liters mein ja rahe, the amount is very large. Right? So when two liters is going inside, suddenly there is a low pressure that is created near the nasal prongs. Okay? And what happens? Air from outside reaches inside. Air from outside reaches inside. Air from mouth goes inside. Samjha hai? To andar ka wo dilute hota hai. Samjha hai? Haan? To hum aisa bolte hai ki bhai, two liters agar de rahe, one liter agar de rahe, to hum log factor of four pagar de. Mada, agar 21% bahar hai, okay? Aur mene one liter diya, to 24 ho jayega. Ek three to four. Thik hai? अगर टू लीटर दे दिया 24 का 28 होएगा परसेंटेज एफआईओ के ऊपर हाँ थ्री लीटर दे दिया तो 28 का 32 होगा अप्रॉक्सिमेट हम बता रहे हैं अप्रॉक्सिमेट की वी आर टेलिंग टाइप बाय फैक्टर ऑफ फोर यू नो थ्री टू फोर इट इस गोइंग ऑफ लेकिन ये मैं क्या वर्ड यूज़ कर रहा हूँ अप्रॉक्सिमेट मैं � कि भाई अगर मैंने वन लीटर दिया तो वो ट्वेंटी फोर हो गया अगर मैं टू लीटर दिया तो वो ट्वेंटी एट हो गया हाँ ये ये क्लियर ठीक है हम लोग नॉर्मली फोर टू फाइव लीटर्स के ऊपर देते नहीं है क्यों नहीं देते हैं क्योंकि ये जो हवा आ रही है आपने कभी लगाया आपने आपने ऊपर कभी लगा हो लगा हो इसलिए कुछ नहीं होगा आपको डिजीज विजीज कुछ होगा नहीं आज जब भी वापस जाओगे हॉस्पिटल आईसीयू में आप ये लगा के देखो हाँ विद इन फाइव मिनट्स आपको दर्द चलो होगा पाँच मिनट के ऊपर यूज करो दर्द होगा दर्द अगर पांच लीटर के ऊपर उसने यूज़ किया, you will start getting pain. Why will you get pain? Because the air that is coming is very cold. It's very very cold. It is biting. That air is very very cold. When cold air is going at high flow, it is bitingly cold inside and it will pain you. Okay? You understand me? It will actually pain you. Yeah, I'll let you know. Yeah. I call it. You understand? It is bitingly cold. So, if you put the nasal prongs for 5 liters and 6 liters, a to the air is so dry. It is so dry because हम लोग जो air इधर breathe कर रहे हैं, ये humidified है. हमारे यहाँ पर humidity है. Humidity की वजह से हमको breathe करना आसान पड़ता है. It's more comfortable. वही हवा अगर हमने dry करके अंदर भेज दिया, dry करके अंदर भेज दिया, जो हमारा हवा dry होता है, वो dry oxygen होता है. वो ड्राई ऑक्सीजन मेरे गोज इनसाइड, यू नो इट इस इट इस वेरी डार्क ड्राइज ऑफ़ द म्यूकोसा, बट से ड्राइज ऑफ़ द म्यूकोसा यू आर अनेबल टू ब्रीथ प्रॉपर्ली, यू स्टार्ट पिकिंग द नोज एंड यू स्टार्ट ब्लीडिंग, आर यू अंडरस्टैंडिंग? सो व्हाट इज़ इट इफ यू रीच आई द अदर्स लेकिन हम लोग पांच से अराउंड फाइव लीटर्स के ऊपर हम दे नहीं पाते समझ में आ रहा है क्यों नहीं दे पाते हैं पहला बहुत कोल्ड है हाँ पाइपिंग दर्द होएगा दूसरा इट इस ड्राई हो सकता है इंपॉर्टेंटली क्या है इंपॉर्टेंटली क्या है जिसको ज्यादा जरूरत है आ, उसको उतने एफआई टू जाएगा नहीं मेरे को बता सकते हो क्यों जिसको जरूरत है जिसको ज्यादा जरूरत है उसको एफआई टू जैसा हम बोल रहे हैं वैसे बढ़ेगा नहीं क्यों बताओ मेरे को जिस हुएवर वांट्स मोर मींस ही इज ब्रीथिंग एक्सेसिवली वर्क ऑफ ब्रीथिंग लेकिन उसको एफआई टू के लिए चेंज होगा हाउ विल द एफआई टू चेंज the question is, you are understanding the question. The question is, you have a person who is normally sitting. उसको मैंने बोला दो लीटर किया, तीन लीटर किया, चार लीटर किया, thirty five, forty percent पहुंच गया. Now let this patient be breathless. If this patient is breathless, because one of our reason to give oxygen in the ICU is breathlessness, no? He is breathless. And now you put nasal prongs. Will it give the same FIO two or not? No, sir. Again, I will put the question. If I do, we are thinking if I give two liters, it will become this much. If it becomes three liters, it will become this much. We have decided that it will become this much. Okay, because air dilution is going on. 
Huh? Unless your air dilation will arrive. You are understanding this. Huh? Now let me make this patient breathless. Now this patient will be. What is it? Unless it is. So dead space. You are, you are having very different different kinds of words. You said dilution. You said resistance. You said dead space. So what is the right answer? The right answer is what? कि तुम अगर normally हमारा normal flow rate हम लोग जिस हम लोग अभी कितने में breathe कर रहे हैं मैं around six to eight liters per minute हाँ maximum ten to fifteen liters per minute breathe कर रहे हैं दस से पंद्रह liter per minute हम breathe कर रहे हैं all of us because we may be taking tidal volumes of eight hundred respiratory rate may be twelve कितना होगी eight into twelve ten ना ten liters समझ में आ रहा है eight into twelve कितना हो गया ten liters so, if we breathe 10 liters, we are around 10 liters per minute. Do you understand? Do you understand? Now, if I make the patient breathe, then his RR will increase, his tidal volume is mostly increasing, then he will breathe in 10 liters, because if the respiratory rate is 40, and the tidal volume is 600, how much is it? 10 liters. So, if the tidal volume is 10 liters, how much is it? If I make my tidal volume 1000, I make him breathe 40 times, it's now 40 liters. So what is known is when the patient is distressed, he may be breathing 100 liters, up to 100 liters to 120 liters per minute. Sir, we have put 4 liters in that. We have put 4 liters in that. You have put 4 liters in that. Now, you have put 4 liters in that. And you have put 4 liters in that. और 50 लीटर और वो ब्रीथ कर रहे हैं 50 लीटर तो देर इज टू मच ऑफ डाइल्यूशन नो तो एफ आओ तुम अचीव कर सकते हो क्या 40 45 50 यू कांट अचीव यू कांट अचीव यू अंडरस्टैंडिंग सर एक्सप्लेन वंस मोर और यू अंडरस्टूड यू अंडरस्टूड वापस समझाता हूँ ओके नॉर्मली मेरा पर्सन इज ब्रीथिंग नॉर्मली ल हाँ इधर कौन सा रहा है तो ठीक है वन डेटर कर दिया तो ट्वेंटी फोर हो गया बिकॉज़ उतना ही डायरेक्ट हो रहा है उतना ही डायरेक्ट हो रहा है हाँ उतना ही मतलब इंडस्ट्री डेटर भी उतना ही डायरेक्ट हो रहा है ठीक है नाउ एम बी आई ब्रीड मेरा हवा मुंह से भी जा रहा है मेरा हवा नाक से भी ज़्यादा जा रहा है मेरा फ्लोर Okay, and I am only adding four or five liters. So dilution is too much, no? Hawa bahar se to dilute ho rahe. Forty liters aa kaise rahe? Bahar se. Forty liters isse to nahi aa rahe, because we are not increasing this. We are not increasing this. We are only getting from outside. So when that is coming from outside, this four liters will get diluted majorly. So you two liters ka, three liters ka, two four liters ka, two ten liters ka, two bhi fark nahi padne wala. Samajh mein aa rahe? So, so can a nasal prong be used for distressed patient? No. It cannot be used at all. Clear? You are understanding? Sachin, you are understanding? This means to say, if I use my nasal prongs in distressed patient, I might not, be, not even be giving 21% of it, maybe just 21%. You are understanding? Clear on this? So let's ask, Ali has just entered this hall, okay? So I said, so I have a patient who is distressed, okay? Uh, I have a patient who is distressed, and he is breathing uh, a respiratory rate of 18 and 20. 25 is breathing, so 25 is breathing. You had kept, uh, you had started, you had started this patient on nasal prongs of uh, 2 liters. The saturation was 94. The saturation was 94. Now, within one hour, one hour, one and a half hours, patient started getting respiratory rate from 12 to 28. He has increased, doubled or more than doubled the respiratory rate. It has gone from 12 to 28 and the saturation has become 89. You have a nasal prongs in place. Will it make sense to increase the flow of the nasal prongs or no and why? So I'll again explain to you. You have a patient at a, at a nasal prongs of 2 liters per minute. He was saturated 94, comfortable he was. Now in some time, in one hour's time, from a respiratory rate of 12, he has gone to a respiratory rate of 28, 
and now he looks to be slightly distressed. He looks to be slightly distressed. Will you increase the nasal prolonged flow or you will leave it there? Huh? And if you if you increase the nasal prolonged flow, what will happen? What are his FIO is going to be eighty? His his saturation is going to be eighty eight. Which is nasal prolonged is going to be ten. No, you are at two, na? You can go to five if you want. What? But then the cause of the attack. Forget the cause. And we are already treating the oxygenation. Forget the cause. I am asking you: Will you increase the flow on the nasal prolonged? Yes or no? Would you increase the flow of the nasal prongs? Yes or no? My question is either yes or no. I don't want an explanation first. What is the answer? We can. We can. So can we? Yes or no, Rupali? No. No. We can't. Now why we can't? Can you hear it loudly? जब उनका respiratory rate बढ़ता है, उसके साथ dilution भी बढ़ता है. मतलब वो अगर 24 breathe कर रहे हैं, तो उनका जो tidal volume है, वो भी बढ़ेगा. तो हम इधर से 4 liter दे या 8 liter दे, वो dilution कम होगा. तो जितना effort हमें देना है, उसको उतना जाएगा नहीं. तो बढ़ाने में कुछ मतलब ही नहीं है. You understood? No. So I explain this once more, okay, for everyone. So when a patient is on a nasal prong and he is breathing normally. So that uh, the, the, the formula that you increase by 4% per liter works. How is that working? Because the entire principle is Venturi's principle. Air is going in full flow from here. So if 2 liters are going from here, the pressure here is high. The moment it comes out from here, the pressure is low, low pressure. Air from outside comes inside and dilutes. That is how you are getting the dilution 21%, 24%, 28% every time increasing nasal prongs. Now this patient is breathing normally at a very normal respiratory rate. He is breathing at a respiratory rate of 10. That is why this is working like this. Now when he breathes <laughs> like this, what is actually happening is, okay, he is breathing a higher amount. So the tidal volume may be going up to maybe 800 ml, the RR may be going up to 40. So when that occurs, your total minute ventilation, say 40 into RR of, RR of, uh, you can't use the usual flow meters versus this flow meter. So what is the difference such a Medical oxygen thing or medical oxygen thing? What is the difference? Sapna? Come here, come, flow, come and see. Flow we say uh, Come here. What is the difference between this and that? Dekhi batao. What is the difference? Flow we yeah, say Sapna Bosek, such a bed, Upali. What is the difference between this and that? Difference here, yeah, meter or the formula that we are using, what is the difference? Yeah. You see, you see the difference here? The difference is very different. Okay. Here you have you have flow that is going up to 70 to 80, 70, 80, 75, 80. You see? Huh? It was 75 feet, these are low? Yes. 75 feet, whereas our there is only 15 liters. Huh? Now why is this 75 feet? Because we have no flow to give it. So this flow meter, we will not use it. We will not use it. Because it has 15 liters. How much does it have? 70 liters. How do you calculate the FIO of this machine? By changing this. Clear? How do you change the flow? By changing here. How to change the temperature by changing here? Clear? Clear on this? It's very important that you know this. Okay, you can't use this uh, flow meter or uh, you can't use that flow meter of this. It will not work well. Clear? Okay? Alright. He is heavily, he is now breathing 50 liters. Initially he was breathing 10 liters. Now he is breathing 50 liters. How much are giving? 2 liters, 3 liters, 4 liters, 5 liters. So the dilution is so much that the F out will not work. So will your oxygenation improve? No. Because 21 is 21 only. Mostly. Are you understanding? Yes. Uh, that is why I need, that is why this is called as low flow device. So this cannot be used in a distressed patient. It is wrong. If you are putting nasal prongs to a patient who is distressed, for example, patient has come from 
from the casual deal with a nasal prong, it doesn't make sense for me. If you want a patient, then it is better not to give only nasal prongs. It is not going to work. So if a patient is coming distressed, the device that you are supposed to give is the highest flow that you have. The highest flow that you have. The highest flow you can get is from non-invasive ventilation or from high flow nasal cannula or if the patient is at 15 or 20 liters or 20 liters, NRBM. Because NRBM we give at high flows. Clear? Flow match karna padega na. Agar wo patient agar 20 liters le raha hai, 30 liters le raha hai, to unko 2 liters le raha hai, kya matlab hoga? Agar 30 liters le raha hai, to usko 15 liters lagega. Ya 20 liters lagega, at least thoda derivation karne ke liye. Ye to aisa device lagega. Clear? Huh? So you can't use uh, a nasal prongs by increasing uh, flows in a patient who is distressed. This is very clear, right? That is why if a patient is distressed, if a patient is distressed, we want something which will give high flows. One of the things we use is NRBM, non-rebreather mask, which gives high FiO2 from a different mechanism. What is the mechanism there? What is the mechanism there? Uska FiO2 badhta kaisa hai? All the air, we have discussed this past, the air goes from here into the non rebreather mask, into the non-breathing bag, it goes into the bag, when the patient takes a breath, then the flap from the top closes and the air from this bag goes into the patient. It has got one way valves, it has got one way valve here, one way valve here. So both these flaps will close when the patient takes a breath, this flap will open and all the 100% oxygen goes into the patient. Okay, whereas when the patient breathes out, the air from here stops this flap, nothing fills inside this bag, and all the air goes out from the sides. That's how the NRBM works. Okay, that's why we give 100% oxygen. Right, but the NRBM is a closed system. You cannot, it will give 100%. I can't titrate it. I can't say 100 ka 90 karunga, 90 ka 80 karunga, 80 ka 70 karunga. I can't titrate it. That is 100 percent. There is no titration. So I to, to have something in the middle between a nasal prong and between a no titration, I require another device. There are two devices. One is non-invasive mask, uh, which you can actually change the FIO2 on the ventilator. Uh, that is the ICU non-invasive ventilators. And the second is I flow laser cannulas. Clear? Clear on this? Huh? So what is this high flow laser cannula? What is the difference between this and the nasal prongs? Can anyone tell me the difference between both of them? Between the high flow laser cannula and the uh, and the nasal prongs? Moisture, high, the, 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 you know, the, the better um, humidification, not moisturizing, humidification, you are right, humidification, then, so, yeah, so the air that is coming from moisture gets humidified, and it's a cold, air. temperature, it can get the temperature up, so the comfort factor is increasing, our problem was what, if it is cold, it is biting inside, if it is cold, it is biting inside, so by giving this, you are heating it, uh, heating the air, so it is no, no longer very difficult for the patient. It is it, it is heated. Then we get titrate. We get titrate the oxygen. So we are getting all of the benefits with a high flow nasal cannula. Clear? But how does this work? How do you? Uh, what are the responsibilities? And which patients will you give this? So a what we know from NIV, NIV we can use on NIV we can use in patients who have COPD, and you are using in cardiogenic pulmonary edema. We discuss that. We do it for COPD patients and we do it for cardiogenic pulmonary edema. Clear? Clear on this? However, when we are actually anything different from that, for example, you have pneumonia. Pneumonia. You have a patient with pneumonia. Alright? You have a patient with pneumonia who is requiring more than normal oxygen. Pneumonia patient will be slightly breathless. Slightly breathless. With nasal prong and an oxygen, we will not be able to achieve the saturations required. The saturation is 85, 86. So then you have put nasal prong that is wrong in the first place. Then you put mask, it comes to 88. I want to take it higher. If I have to differentiate between NIV and HFNC, I will now use what? HFNC. Because NIV, the best role is where? When there is COPD or there is cardiogenic pulmonary edema. This is a patient of pneumonia. So in a patient of pneumonia, I would probably use a high flow nasal cannula. Clear? 
So now, how do you, how do you, uh, so now you know which patient will you have an eye to this camera. For example, if you have a patient who's come post-operatively, patient has come post-operatively, patient is breathing heavily, okay, patient is not stupid, patient is not cardiogenic for very long. what will I use? I patient is breathing heavily, right? Now I have another patient, we have, we have just extubated him in the ICU, we have just extubated him in the ICU, okay, now we are extubated in the ICU and he's breathing slightly difficult, what will you use? You understand? I am taking a patient for ventilation. I want to put a tube and it's an emergency. Huh? This patient is breathing heavily, that's why he's distressed. Huh? I want to achieve good FIO2 in that particular patient. What will I use? Just prior to intubation. Clear? So just prior to intubation, HFNC has come. Right? Just prior to, uh, just after extubation, HFNC has come. If the patient has pneumonia of some origin, HFNC has come. If the patient is breathing heavily for some reason which is other than COPD or pulmonary or cardiogenic pulmonary edema, HFNC has come. So now you have the indications. These are, these are the indications for high flow nasal cannula. Okay. Clear? How do you apply them? How do you apply this device? So first it needs humidification. Okay. So what comes in this, in this is a humidification. This is the water that goes inside. Mm. Okay, this is the water that goes inside. Sterile water will go inside. It's humid You can't use normal saline. You have to use sterile water. Ah, uh, then normal saline crystallizes. It is getting heated now. So sodium chloride nickel jai. So you can't use normal saline. Uh, so I am going to use this is water, sterile water here. Clear? Uh, this, so this is humidification. It has got a temperature inside, a temperature device inside which heats this. This heats this water. That's why you see vapor around it. So it heats it. It heats it from 31 degrees to 37 degrees. It heats it from 31 degrees to 37 degrees. Hmm? Inside this machine, there is a blender. What is there? There is a blender. What is the blender? It is because of the blender that you are able to change the FIO2. It is because of the blender you are able to change the FIO2. There is what is there inside? Blender. Because here also, like the nasal cannula, I am putting this in the I am putting this in the oxygen. I am putting this for oxygen. It's my 100 percent jar. 100 percent is coming from here. What I need to ch uh, change is the FiO2. Mm -hmm. uh, se soch nahi rahe. Because liters bahut jar hai. So iske andar ek blender hota hai. That blender takes air from outside. It takes air from outside. Okay. If you look at this device, it takes air from outside. It takes air from outside. Okay, from from the back side, and it blends the it blends the oxygen. Blend the summit and then a mix curl in the air or oxygen mix curl in the or just just his up to up to check it was his up to a part of the time. So we are not dependent on this mark, we are dependent on this. That is why is called to high for the cannula to uh uh little so they had the device I put inside is much bigger. So I'm not. अगर वो छोटा होता तो हवा बाहर से अंदर आने की कोशिश करता छोटा होता तो बाहर से हवा अंदर आएगा और वो एफआर डाइल्यूट होएगा मिक्स हो जाएगा समझ में आ रहा है इसीलिए द रिस्पांसिबिलिटी व्हेन यू आर एक्चुअली डूइंग दिस इज टू गेट द राइट साइज इट शुड बी एट लीस्ट मोर देन 50% राइट टू द कैनुला राइट नंबर 1 नंबर 2 इज व्हेन यू आर एक्चुअली मॉनिटरिंग दिस पेशेंट्स यू शुड टेल द पेशेंट टू क्लोज द माउथ क्योंकि इफ यू कीप द माउथ ओपन एयर विल गो फ्रॉम हियर अगेन because it's a low flow system there. Clear? Clear on this? With the low pressure form or right? low flow system, <coughs> low pressure form or right? So the air will go from inside. So a high flow nasal cannula patient, if you breathe, is that right? No. 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 What you have to say? Close your mouth. Please close your mouth. Someone may right? They are mouth breathers because they are having distress, so they breathe through their mouth. You understand? So we have to ensure that they breathe through their nose. Clear? So if you have a high pressure can I breathe? Kya matlab ho gaya? He's taking all the air from here. Are you understanding? Yes. Clear? Any doubts? So the monitoring. So when you come to monitoring of this patient, huh? how do you start this first? So every time you want to start it now, like any device, you want to give a FO2 of 100%. Mm -hmm. Every time you start any device, any device, let it be ventilator, let it be high flow nasal cannula, let it be anything that you start. Uh, uh, it has to start at a hundred percent FIO2. Okay, so you will start this at a 
hundred percent crowded. Now this patient is at a very high respiratory rate. मतलब मिनट वेंटिलेशन कितना है उसका समझ लो उसका रेस्पिरेटरी रेट पचास है फिफ्टी है हाँ फिफ्टी है एंड उसका टाइडल वॉल्यूम से सिक्स हंड्रेड एम है तो कितना हो गया उसका मिनट वेंटिलेशन फिफ्टी इंटू सिक्सटी इज थर्टी लीटर्स राइट फिफ्टी हाँ फिफ्टी रेस्पिरेट इंटू सिक्स हंड्रेड टाइडल वॉल्यूम कितना हो गया थर्टी लीटर्स तो मेरे को आई वॉन्ट टू एंश्योर दैट एट लीस्ट मैच समथिंग फ्रॉम हिम एंड हेल्थ में मॉक उसको वर्कआउट करके मेरे को कम करना है ज्यादा हवा देगा तो उसको अच्छा लगेगा बराबर तो आई वांट टू मेक दिस एट 60 लीटर आई विल ऑलवेज स्टार्ट एट 60 लीटर पर मिनट हां आई स्टार्ट एट एफ आउट ऑफ 100% एंड फ्लो एट 60 लीटर दैट इज हाउ आई विल स्टार्ट इट नो अदर वे टू स्टार्ट प्लीज स्टार्ट इट एट 100% एफ आउट टू एंड एट 60 लीटर पर मिनट एंड इंस्ट्रक्ट द पेशेंट टू ब्रीथ नॉर्मली फ्रॉम द नोज क्लियर and then you take at uh, make the temperature such that it is comfortable for this particular patient you want to say the first setting is the fao2 is 100% the second setting is the liters which are keep at 60 liters because uske upar jayega nahi hai there are devices that goes to 100 liters also like for example the hamilton c6 will go to 100 liters the regular evita xl high flow oxygen will go to 100 liters there are devices that go to 100 liters also But it has been proven that 60 liters is enough. We don't need 100 liters. You don't need it. Clear? So I'll keep it at 60 liters only. I don't need 100 liters. Clear? 60 liters. So 60 liters is the maximum. This is called as air VO2. Ah, uh, air VO2. Uh, clear? Air VO2. So I will give 60 liters per minute. And the next thing is, I will increase the temperature, temperature by temperature. So I ask the patient, Are you feeling okay? Are you feeling warm? Jada lag raha hai? Thanda jada lag raha hai? Garam lag raha hai na? Thik lag raha hai na? उस हिसाब से मैं टेम्परेचर बढ़ाऊंगा टेम्परेचर इज फॉर कंफर्ट ऑफ द पेशेंट जैसा भी डिस्कस नेजल प्रॉब्लम्स विल बाइट इट बिकम वेरी डिफिकल्ट फॉर द पेशेंट टेम्परेचर इज फॉर कंफर्ट सो दैट इज हाउ यू विल टाइट्रेट एट द स्टार्ट इनिशियल टाइट्रेशन फॉर दिस पर्टिकुलर पेशेंट क्लियर क्लियर आफ्टर यू डू दैट एंड योर इंस्ट्रक्शंस आर वेरी क्लियर प्लीज डोंट ब्रीथ थ्रू योर माउथ प्लीज थ्रू योर नोस दैट इज द इंस्ट्रक्शन दैट आई गिव टू योर पेशेंट राइट Now, uh, the next thing what you do is you have to monitor this patient. What are you going to monitor? You are going to monitor whether the respiratory rate has reduced. So, if it is not flow there, so it is not enough flow. So, 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 it is not Are you going to go from maybe 24 to 80? It has to come down. So monitoring is very very important because if there is no improvement in RR, if there is no improvement patient uh, distress, if there is no improvement in the pulse rate or the blood pressure, means your right nasal cannula is not working. You understand me? Huh? So we can't give the right nasal cannula and say okay saturation is normal. No, absolutely not. We cannot put the patient on hypoglycemic cannula and say saturation will improve. Okay, it will improve. Okay, FRT has been done. You have done FRT. Saturation is going to improve. What am I worried about? Distress, work of breathing. So the most important parameter when you attach hypoglycemic cannula is what? Respiratory. Ah, respiratory rate. It is not saturation. Ah, uh, it is not blood pressure. It is respiratory rate. If the respiratory rate comes down by 20%, that is an indication that my HFNC is working. Sundarai. So, what should uh, whenever you are looking after a patient on HFNC, there has to be at one or two hours a note saying the RR has come down to to so and so from so and so. This tells you that the HFNC is working. You understand? So, you will say successful H HFNC. You understand? If your RR is not so, it is wrong to call up and say, uh, "Sir, uh, I put the HFNC saturation hundred percent okay." Am I concerned? No. You have increased the saturation. Hundred percent saturation is going to go up. I am worried about work of breathing RR. So if you if you call up and say, "Sir, uh, I attach the hypoglycemic cannula," one hour later, patient's uh, respiratory rate has come down from twenty four to sixteen. Patient's blood pressure has improved. Patient looks much more comfortable. Uh, 
and now the saturation has started going up. Now I know that what you are understanding. So I mean, saturation to jana hi upar na tum two liters usko sida six liters de rahe ho, one liters ne baato kar rahe ho. Clear? So I mean, other way around, if a patient saturation has gone up, but patient looks all the more bad. Patient looks that he is going to get intubated. Patient is breathing at the same respiratory rate means that is failure. Even though the saturation has gone up, it is failure. So I mean, are you understanding? So it's important to note this down. So. It's a responsibility of the junior doctors as well as the nurses to come back to the consultant and say, yes, this hypronasal cannula is successful. Clear? Clear on this? So how does this thing work? But the way it works, how does this work work up with the I'll explain to you how this works. Okay, there are certain theories behind it. Huh? So one of the theories is the fact that in our body, you know, when you are breathing, there is a put down, there is a one third dead space. We have got two mm per kilogram dead space. Means if I am 60 kilo ka admi ho, and uh, and I am breathing 500 ml tidal volume, two into 60, that is 120 ml, is dead space. <coughs> dead space means that ye hota hai okay. that there is no oxygenation and there is no ventilation with that volume. <coughs> There is no oxygenation and there is no ventilation. When I say there is no oxygenation, means SPO2 is a carbon dioxide. All of us have got a dead space. 2 ml per kilogram, approximately 2 to 2.2 ml per kilogram is our dead space. Right? Huh? So, what this does, machine does, it kind of reduces that dead space. Matlab, there is that volume which is getting lost is now is taken in for oxygenation and ventilation. Clear? Clear on this? Take a So if I am taking 500 ml, 500 ml is, you, 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 it's, it's wrong to think that this 500 ml is going to improve oxygenation and take carbon dioxide. 500 ml pura use nahi hota hai. Uspe se khali, uspe se khali ek number use hota hai. Aur konsa subtract hota hai, dead space subtract hota hai. Dead space is that space that does not take part in respiration. That doesn't take part in respiration. That means it doesn't do anything. It just goes and comes out. Goes and comes out. It doesn't do anything. Dead space. Clear? Approximate dead space in all of us is 2.2 ml a kilogram. Approximate. Huh? But the, that area of air, that air is wasted. Uspe kuch nahi ho hai. HMNC kya karta hai? Wo dead space ko nikal kam kar deta hai. HMNC because of the flow, वो dead space को वो कम कर देता है। मतलब अगर 300 ml respiration में काम हो रहा है, हाँ, अभी वो 400 ml respiration में काम आ जाएगा। समझ में आ रहा है? तो oxygenation भी improve होगा, carbon dioxide removal भी increase होगा। Classical example is a patient that is lying over there. There is a patient over there with edentulous lady whose carbon dioxide was very high। हाँ, हाँ, so what we did over there? Because उसपे क्या हो रहा था? NIV के वजह से वो leak हो रहा था सब जगह। HMNC लगाया। Carbon dioxide कैसे कम हो गया? Carbon dioxide इसके लिए कम हो गया। Because dead space wash out हो गया। जब dead space wash out हो गया, तो उसके साथ साथ tidal volume बढ़ गया, carbon dioxide निकलने चालू हो गया, oxygen निकलने जाने चालू हो गया। इसलिए उसके FIO जब चालू किए थे NIV में 50 था, हम लोग तो फिर 21 percent भी नहीं दे रहे। समझ म are you understanding? Clear? Clear? Huh? So that is one mechanism. One mechanism what? Dead space is reducing. Second, when we are breathing heavily, when anyone breathes heavily, no, your tidal volume does not increase, but tidal volume actually reduces. As a kid, I don't want to breathe from 500 to 200 ml. I don't want to breathe from 200 ml. As a kid, what happens if I am breathing only 200 ml, my lower zone of my lungs are all collapsing. My lower zones are all collapsing. Because to open it in 500 ml, in 100 ml out. Aisa chahiye usko. Am loog agar soya meri kar rahe, to chota ho jayega. Upper person nikal jayega. Huh? Upper person nikal jayega. Upper person nikal jayega. Bara par pura puri tara phulega nahi. If it doesn't open completely, it collapse quickly. To lower lobes of collapse ho jata hai. Amara, jab patient breathe karta hai. Isi lehe jab dekho ke when you put the patient on the ventilator, suddenly oxygenation starts going on. Why? Because suddenly now you're pushing 500 ml inside. जो पहला सौ एमएल था अचानक से पांच सौ एमएल डाल दिया है तो इसलिए ऑक्सीजनेशन तुम्हारा ऊपर होने जा रहा होता है 
you are understanding wo khulne chalu ho jata hai wo clear it starts opening up so how does it open because of pressure we are giving pressure that is why it's opening up volume ke sath pressure ja raha hai iski wo open up ho raha hai clear what is known from this device is that every 10 liter increase in this causes the peak of positive end expiratory pressure to improve by 1 cm सुंदर है 1 to 2 cm इंक्रीज होता है मतलब अगर मैंने इसको 60 लीटर दिया तो 6 to 7 पीप वी आर एक्सपेक्टिंग 6 to 7 पीप वी आर एक्सपेक्टिंग सुंदर है एंड व्हेन द पीप इंक्रीजेस द लंग्स स्टार्ट एक्सपेंडिंग सो फर्स्ट मैकेनिज्म वाज वॉश आउट ऑफ डेड स्पेस द सेकंड मैकेनिज्म वाज द पीप इंक्रीज इन दैट केस टायर ऑफ वॉल्यूम आल्सो इंक्रीजेस इट विल आल्सो इंक्रीज सो व्हाट इफ द पीप इंक्रीजेस व्हाट हैपेंस There are more amount of air that is opened up, so the amount of volume going inside is also higher. You understand? That means the third effect is an improvement in the functional residual capacity or end expiratory lung volume. This is the third effect. What you said is the third effect. पहले तो pressure तो बढ़ गया, उसके ऊपर volume भी बढ़ गया. Some people volume भी बढ़ गया. Clear? जो पहले 200 में जा रहा था अभी 300 जा रहा है में जा रहा है. क्योंकि volume बढ़ गया. Volume has increased. So it increases the functional residual capacity. Clear. So the first effect was what? Wash out of dead space. Second effect was what? Increase in P. It increases by one approximately. So, अभी आप सोचो कि अगर मैंने वो ऐसा आ ऐसा खोल के breathe किया, तो ये P का जाएगा, यहाँ से निकल जाएगा ना P? अगर वो खोल के रखा, तो pressure यहाँ से निकल जाएगा, तो अंदर जाके दो एक ही pipe है ना? तो समझ लो मैंने ऐसा breathe किया. तो पीप कहां से निकलेगा मुंह से निकल जाएगा पीप बॉडी का ही नहीं उसमें इसीलिए इट इज इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर अ हाइपोरिसम चैनल ऑफ पेशेंट टू क्लोज द माउथ एंड ब्रीथ समझ आ रहा है तो पीप इफेक्ट निकल जाएगा सो वी आर वी वी से दैट वी कैन गेट अप्रोक्सीमेटली 6 टू 7 पीप विद द 60 लीटर्स ओके अप्रोक्सीमेटली बट दैट इज अ अप्रोक्सीमेशन ऐसा नहीं है जो मैं बोल रहा हूं कि 1 लीटर एवरी टाइम ऐसा नहीं है सो दैट इज व्हाई व्हाट इज इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर यू व्हेन यू आर ट्रीटिंग अ पेशेंट अ ऑफ से ओबेसिटी मुझे क्या जरूरत है ओबेसिटी सीओपीडी मुझे जरूरत है पीप रहे क्योंकि ओबेसिटी की वजह से बड़ा है वो उसका नीचे का लंग्स कोलैप्स हो रहा है ठीक है हां तो उसमें हम पहला क्या विनोब करेंगे एफआर टू विनोब करेंगे कि आ, कि लीटर्स पर मिनट लीटर एफआर टू कम करेंगे और लीटर्स रखोगे हां क्यों लीटर्स रखोगे आप पीप पीप चाहिए है अच्छा समझ में आ रहा है So I will not use it together. I will not use FAO and FAO uh, uh, two and liters per minute together. Now the obese patient, this is Ganesh. Ha? Us to me, what we did? We did his FAO two first minimum. After that, slowly, 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 we pump. Because we know that he needs to pump. Because he is obese. So you can't reduce both together. Do you understand? Meaning of this patient, it depends on what patient you are looking at. Do you understand? 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 कि जब एफ आउ टू फोर्टी परसेंट होता है एंड लीटर्स पर मिनट फोर्टी लीटर्स होता है वी कैन टेक इट ऑन इट फॉर फॉर्म्स अंडरस्टैंडिंग इफ आई रीच एन एफ आउ टू फोर्टी परसेंट एंड इफ आई रीच एन फ्लो रेट ऑफ फोर्टी लीटर्स पर मिनट यू कैन टेक इट ऑन इट फॉर टेजल फॉर्म बिकॉज दैट पेशेंट इज नाउ कम्फर्टेबल क्लियर So you don't need to come down from 40 to 35 and about 40 to 20, 35. You can't even do it. You may want to, you may want to, you may want to do it also. It is not going to make a difference. Clear? On an average, this is what this is what. Is. So tomorrow you want to be around this patient, be around at 40, 40. No problem. Clear? Yes. Clear? Yes. 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 And four, we've learned what are the mechanisms in which this works. We have learned all four now. Now you tell me, what is the advantage of this versus non-invasive ventilator? Can talk. Patient comfortable. For number one, patient can talk in both. Can he talk more comfortably yeah. with this? Okay. Yeah. Maybe not. Non-invasive also they can talk, but it's not comfortable to talk, yeah. right? Because of the air coming inside. Here you're comfortable to talk. He can eat uh, he, with with no problem. He can eat. Okay, वो बात अलग ही जब भी वो खा रहा है तब पीप कम हो रहा है उसका. जब भी वो खा रहा है पीप कम हो रहा है. You understand? But he can eat. He वो खा सकता है मतलब वो you can uh, sip feed, you can eat food, you can do everything because hypertension can be there. You can titrate the FiO2 much better. 
बिकॉज वेन यू आर ऑन एन आई बी एंड यू वॉन्ट टू ईट हम लोग को एन आई का मास्क निकालना पड़ता है तो एफ गया तुम्हारा तुमको नेजर प्रॉम्स लगा के करना पड़ता है राइट right? इसमें क्या हो रहा है तुम नेजर प्रॉम्स लगाया है एफ आर टू तुम बढ़ा सकते हो एफ आर टू तुम बढ़ाओ और खिलाओ अरे पीप कम हो रहा है लेकिन एटलीस्ट एफ आर टू बढ़ा सकते ना तुम सो सिमिलरली इफ द पेशेंट इज एट फोर्टी लीटर्स पर मिनट You're about to win this patient, obese patient, and you're going to make him eat. Let that pot, make that forty sixty, make the effort to high, so that he can eat. Then you come down after he eats because mouth closes with that oxygen. You understand it now? <coughs> so the the responsibility at that time when you are feeding such a patient who's requiring sixty liters per minute is to ensure that he keep at sixty. If the patient is at fifty, if the patient is at fifty, then during feeding make it sixty. During feeding make it sixty. ताकि वो पीप इफेक्ट निकल ना जाए सर मैं एज फार एज पॉसिबल मेक इट द हाईएस्ट पॉसिबल एट दैट पर्टिकुलर मोमेंट क्लियर इफ द पेशेंट इज एन एफ आर टू ऑफ 40 ओके एंड ही इज बी सैचुरेटिंग यू नो व्हेन यू व्हेन यू व्हेन ही इज ओपनिंग हिज माउथ मेक द एफ आर टू ऑफ 50 60 एंड देन यू डू द फीडिंग सो यू हैव टू जज व्हिच पेशेंट हैव टू व्हाट कौन से एफ आर टू बढ़ाना है कि फ्लो बढ़ाना है ये आपको जज करना है क्लियर Right. So, so one difference you said was it's comfortable. Huh? Second thing is you are able to eat. Able can eat and all. Third thing is very uh, you have got titration ability. And if you have titration ability, then you can eat. You can take it out. Titration ability is not there. Right. And fourth thing is you can give it even for pneumonia and ARDS and all these things. You can try it out. Where whereas NIV you cannot try out at that time. So it's difficult to do that. Right. Huh? So there are various benefits of using the high flow nasal cannula, right? So any questions on this? Any questions? Any questions on high flow nasal cannula? No. Why? Why would you want to do that? What is the? Uh, you can use whatever you want, but what do you think personally would probably be beneficial because of the comfort, right? What we know for NIV, NIV non-invasive ventilation, is that it works perfectly for COPD and for cardiogenic pulmonary edema. So, if you have ARDS with COPD, you use it. If there is ARDS with pulmonary edema, a cardiogenic origin, use NIV. If you have obesity with NIV, obesity with this, you use NIV, no problem. Okay. But when you are in a situation where you have pure ARDS, okay, either you intubate. Uh, this will be just a bridge using NIV or using HFNC will be just a bridge before intubation, before intubation. Okay, but looking at it, it seems to be more comfortable if he is able to close the mouth. With NIV, all they are doing is putting a mask. That's the only difference they are doing. You are trying to generate peep in that, but you know how much leak occurs there. If there is so much of leak occurring in NIV, where the peep is getting from? Here, yeah. uh, in NIV, another problem is what? When you're giving NIV, pressure also तो है ही उसके अलावा, see हम लोग वहाँ पर ना वो प्रेशर उतना टाइडल वाली देगा उसको, he will have to take the टाइडल वाली जब you're giving 15, 16, 17 इतनी की प्रेशर्स, he will get big big टाइडल वॉल्यूम्स, what is harmful in ARDS? Big टाइडल वॉल्यूम्स, right? Here he decides the टाइडल वॉल्यूम, who decides the टाइडल वॉल्यूम? The patient, okay? So the patient can generate lower टाइडल वॉल्यूम्स. So it is less harmful for a patient to use high flow nasal cannula theoretically. You understand? So I would rather in a pneumonia patient. Now, now tell me if a patient who comes with pneumonia and the saturation is 85 percent, you have put nasal prongs. Is that right? No. No. Is distress? It's not right. What will you put? HFNC. Why now HFNC? Because, because it's comfortable. It's I can titrate my F R O two. Huh? And it is, uh, uh, and uh, and it not cause pressure ulcers and all those problems. Now, if it's not working well, then I have other devices to try. You are understanding? And when I do that, how do I start at Kalpana? What is my starting? Hundred percent. FiO two. Sixty liters. Huh? How much flows? Sixty liters. Sixty liters. How much temperature? Thirty. Uh, temperature. According to patient, you will ask the patient, is it okay, is it okay, is it okay, and give that temperature. So 60 liters flow, F R to 100%, and then temperature. And then what will I monitor, sister? RR monitoring. RR monitoring. And you should have a documentation that says 
that the RR is actually improving. Uh, so you will say RR is improving, patient getting more comfortable. Okay, respiratory rate is definitely increasing. Minute ventilation is improving. Pulse rate is settling down. BP is improving, and the saturation is also improving. Then I will titrate my FiO2. Then I will give the lowest possible FiO2, where I can keep my saturation above 88 to 92 percent. Lowest possible FiO2 to, to keep my saturation somewhere between, uh, somewhere above 88 to 92 percent. Right. So this is all about high flow nasal cannula. Here.